Now some of us may have thought that PXG had gone all budgies on us, but that doesn't quite seem to be the case. Gen 4 has arrived and I'm about to test the new driver. Well, the first thing to note is the premium stuff is back and the premium starts with the head cover itself. It's probably the most luxurious head cover I've ever had my mitts on and uh, it's incredibly soft leather, really nice. So that's where you first see the difference as soon as it's out the bag. The looks of the driver itself, it's very much in the same profile as what we've seen in the prototype, but the crown is massively different. And I think the crown is something that uh, when I first seen it on uh, some leaked Instagram images, um, I must admit, I wasn't that keen. I thought that block of uh, white was, was sort of solid in its colour. It's not. It's very much, as you can see in the images going over here now, it's that perforated finish. And when it, that between the matte finish of the crown, they've done another amazing job of setting something up totally different than anything else on the marketplace. Very much unique, very much PXG. And honestly, it looks superb at a dress and frames the ball incredibly well. Right, so before I give you my opinion on how this thing performs and how it looks, what are yours? And what are yours in terms of A, this unique look, and B, the price point again? So, uh, like I said, the premium line returns, but nothing like what it was before. I think Gen 2 drivers, when they first out, 875, it's now a 550 product in UK pounds. Massively different, but it still would sit it at the top end uh, in terms of its price point. So. Is this going to be on your list? Are you going to try it? What do you think of it? General feedback down below. I love to hear your comments. Right, that is testing on the course finished. And now what we need to do is collect some dry ball data. And ultimately what you all want to know now is how does it fare on our long drive challenge? So uh, back to four golf. The Gen 4 drivers come in three very different profiles. Each of the head shape very different from the other and again providing characteristics that fit your preferences. The crown is a hybrid of titanium in the heel and toe, whilst the centre is carbon fibre, a combination that helps lower the CG and increase MOI. But then this visible white pattern on the crown is an aluminium vapour, which increases the stiffness and stability of the carbon element of the crown. A TI-412 titanium is responsible for the high-speed face, but once again it's the ability to precision weight your driver at custom fit, which is really interesting. It gives endless options to weight and change the mass to optimise your individual needs. Right, well, that was a great morning down at Conway. Uh, that was last week, and uh, I've now this morning collected data, which I'll go through at the end of the video. Uh, what I can tell you is it's performed pretty much exactly as you'd expect it to. Yet again, another driver that hits the ball and comes in around the sort of 240 odd carry for me. Um, but it's been it's performed well. We're out on a course. We're going to hit a few um, a few balls while the camera's on. Just talk about the way it sets up at a dress, which I didn't mention that greatly, and how it sounds as well. And we'll just hit a couple of shots into this uh, fairway that we've got set up on Trackman. I'm interested, as I've already asked, about the way this ball, or the way this sort of club sits at a dress. For me, it's come as quite a surprise. I've just been speaking to somebody who's just walked in, actually, and uh, they commented the same thing, where it does look very much different than the images that I have seen uh, online. And... Um, it really sits nice behind the ball. Let's hit a few and see how this thing sounds. What, the, what they do, what they do well, and we've got a, 
Um, I'll just see where that ball's going. It looks a, a decent drive, to be fair. We found the fairway. There's a great course. It's Sebenak, I think it's called, which held uh, the US Open for the ladies not too long ago. Um, yeah, it's they do a really good thing, like it or not, in making these clubs sound. That balance between sounding as though they're zipping off that club face and they're... And it's not so much soft, but it's very much responsive. And I love uh, that combination. And they've done it in these drivers. It's so different for me. And again, one of the criticisms I had of the um, 0211 driver and the 0211 fairways, they had that very much hard sound. And it's not for me. It doesn't make a great deal of difference to a lot of golfers. But for me, it's I, sound and feel are huge in my buying decisions. So for me, the 0211 driver was just a little bit too harsh. I likened it again, Ping G425 range again. Superb performance, unreal. But if you had one criticism of both of those things, it would be um, the sort of sound and feel. And that's what they've changed massively with the driver into this, uh, into this Gen 4 range. I hope you can hear it again. It's, you know, it's very hard to pick up the audio inside. I think we've probably found a couple of fairways there, which is uh, quite decent. Yeah, mind you, there's a bit of room here. Avoiding the bunkers is, uh, is a bit of a job, but uh, we've managed to do that and find the fairway. I think we've got, we've, we've got this price point I mentioned earlier. Um, I've since found out it's 465, so I've got the number wrong. Um, 465 pound pitches this driver in amongst it now so we're in amongst the top end of the tailor-made sim uh the callaway epic range uh again that ping g425 so it sits right in there it's a, it's again a low there premium product it is so so different in terms of where it's pitched and i think this is all down to um you're going to be in that realms where you try this driver and it's going to perform incredibly well. Incredibly well just as the Sim does, just as the Callaway Epic does, just as the G425 does. The things you're going to pick your driver on now are going to be based on how it looks and how it feels. And I think they're the massive difference. And maybe that other one thing is your brand loyalty as well. They're the things that are making you choose drivers right now because in performance wise, this will no doubt stand up against all of those drivers. It's been extremely consistent that's another thing to consider when you're making your decision in terms of your own performance dispersion wise shaft choice and again maybe worth mentioning i've got this even flow riptide cb in uh, a stiff and again i think that's uh, a really sort of friendly shaft it's uh, again in that regular option i think it'll suit a lot of golfers so i think for me that's it in terms of trying the club um, you've seen it out in the fairway we've uh, we've got some data i'll just quickly go through these numbers at the very end and uh, we'll leave it there, I think. Let's have one last shot while the camera's on. That's probably the best one out of three. We find another fairway. That could be too good and in a bunker. Yeah, it's in a bunker. Right, so I think just rounded up with a quick look at these numbers, which have been, uh, to be fair, really impressive. We've got that sort of uh, club head speed, 99.2 on average, 145 ball speed, 2650 spin. And already those three numbers, those correlations between the three are really, really good and optimum. What I've been most impressed with is sort of the consistency uh, in all of those numbers. And if you look at the carry distance, I mean, 242 on average, uh, we've got two balls under that 240 mark and the others. That's, again, pretty much my optimum performance. But again, the launch angle, 14.7, peak height of 100 feet. It's kind of like, in my eyes and the way I look and analyse the data, that's pretty much hit every number and ticked every box you'd want it to do. But it's at its maximum now in terms of what we're expecting to see in terms of club head performance. And I'm just going to throw up at the end there on the last screen is the dispersion. And once again, you'll see average golfer, this myth that one club is all of a sudden going to be everything grouped down the middle is absolutely ridiculous. It's going to be where I've hit, what have I hit, four slightly off to the left. We've got one down the middle and two leaked right. We're probably finding the fairways with them. Arguably those three down the left are fine in the first cut of rough. But again, my performance with it is, uh, is ultimately where we finished up in terms of my swing. My overall assessment is 
as ever, it's a simple one. It's like if you're in the market for a new driver, then now, and you're in that sort of budget in terms of what we mentioned earlier, those four brands, then this now sticks it into that equation and every reason why you should try it. And then couple it up with the kind of the weighting system, you've got to go and get custom fit for this driver. You've got to make sure that you uh, use every option there is in terms of getting the best benefits out of the club itself. And the way to do that is get custom fit, mess around with that weighting system, and uh, that is the key to this driver, I think. Maybe uh, being, uh, well, as much to your preference as you can possibly get out there. And then the rest, I'm afraid, is down to you. Anyway, that's me done. Review over. Um, I'm off now to Chester Golf Club to review uh, a couple of fairway woods from PXG. So keep an eye out for that one, and I'll see you soon.